All right, guys, it is finally time for us to start a new unit. So we're going through a force and motion unit now, starting on concept one of our force and motion unit. We're talking about describing motion. And what's great about moving out of that first unit is we are now finally getting into like the fun and actionable science that we can do. So when we talk about describing motion, it's when an object changes its position which makes sense, right? Like if someone just stands still, they're not changing where they're at, they're not in motion in any way, shape or form. And it depends on a reference point. So if I was at McDonald's, I don't know, and I was walking over to Kroger, then I would say I'm like halfway from the McDonald's to Kroger. My reference point is McDonald's. If you were walking down the street and you're like, oh, I just passed Julie's house. Well, Julie's house would be your reference point. So your reference point is just an indicator that orients you. And it's a place where you measure from, record, or witness events. So you could be like, I remember when I found out that Pluto wasn't a planet, I was at so-and-so's house. Not, not as exciting. Or you can say, um, like, the car sped past me when I was at the gas station. Those sorts of things. So we always want to consider a reference point when we're describing motion because it's important for us to be able to tell where something was at or where it is coming from. So to measure motion, the first thing we use is distance. It's represented with the letter D, and that's just how far an object is moved. So I think about distance like my Fitbit, which I'm not wearing right now, but pretend I am. So your Fitbit is always gonna measure your steps. Even if you were like marching in place, it would count those steps. It doesn't actually care where you went. It just cares that at some point you were in movement and you moved for a certain amount of steps and that's all it counts. So this can be measured in meters, inches, feet, miles, those sorts of things. Remember that our standard unit of measure in science is gonna be meters for distance. And then we have displacement. So you'll see that little triangle. That means, it stands for delta, and a delta is just a change in something. So in this case, we have a change in um, position. So we are, Essentially looking, instead of a Fitbit that looks at every step in between, it's like we blink, and when we blink, we only see where something started and when where something stopped. Or like your computer like glitches up when you're watching like a football game, and all of a sudden the player is 15 yards farther down the field. You have no clue what happened in the middle of those 15-yard runs. You just know that they went 15 yards. So we take that very start point and that very end point, and we use those to subtract and see how far between those two points we are. So if a runner runs around a 400 meter track, they actually end up exactly where they started because they just go in a big loop, which means that they've traveled a distance or their Fitbit would tell them, hey, you've run 400 meters. But if we blinked in between where they started and stopped, it would look like they had moved zero meters. So that's our displacement. So let's look at this example. This is a soccer field for those of you who don't know. I know some people are very against soccer. I love soccer. Um, so we have someone starting at the goal line. They ran to midfield 50 meters and then they turned back and ran back 20 meters. Who knows why? So if a soccer player runs after his opponent 50 meters north and turns around and chases him 20 meters south, what is his distance and his displacement? So remember, his distance is the total number of steps his Fitbit would tell him he went. So how far would a Fitbit have said he went? And that would be your 50 meters plus your 20 meters. But let's say that we like totally blanked out and we only saw the very beginning and the very end of this play. Well, we've stopped, I forgot I can get a little laser pointer. We've stopped 20 meters back from our initial 50 meter run. So really we're stopping about here, which means that we can take 50 minus 20 and see what this total 
displacement is because that's our start point and our finish point. So those are the only two we care about. So he ended up being 30 meters north. And we want to say north specifically because if we just say 30 meters from where he started, because we care about which direction we're going in displacement, we have to make sure we include a north. Sometimes finding displacement isn't that simple. So if an object travels at a right angle, we use the Pythagorean theorem to find displacement. Now, the Pythagorean theorem is a little bit more math. Um, we will not do a ton of Pythagorean theorem problems, but you do need to have this written down and know how to use it. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And what that represents is a and b are our two sides of our triangle that form a right angle. And then c is actually the displacement or the total distance that we have traveled between those points if we blinked. So in this case, C is our hypotenuse and that's our displacement. But this is not needed every single time. If we're only traveling like in one direction and then we turn back around and go the opposite, then we don't need to use this. But if we're going like west and then north, then we would have to use this. So using the Pythagorean theorem, a delivery truck drives four miles west before turning right and driving six miles north to make a delivery. So if we draw this out, we would get these four miles west, and then he turns right and drives six miles north. Now it doesn't matter which way your triangle points as long as you know which directions you're heading in. So find the delivery truck's distance and displacement. We're going to use A is 4 miles and B is 6 miles, but we want to figure out what C is. If we're finding the distance, we would just take the 4 plus the 6. So it's like if the truck had a Fitbit or if we're just reading the speedometer or odometer on the truck, it's telling us we went 4 and 6 miles, we went 10 miles. But if we need to find the displacement, we're going to use our A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And either one of the triangle sides, it doesn't matter which one you put in which spot, we would get 4 squared plus 6 squared equals C squared. The big part with this is I would go ahead and write out that your 4 squared is 16, your 6 squared is 36, and that way we make sure that we're not doing any random math here, because remember, when we square something, it's just it times itself. So 4 times 4 is 16, 6 times 6 is 36. So then I add those together and I get 52 equals C squared. But I'm not done because I need just one C, not C times itself. So to undo our C squared and get one C by itself, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And when we take the square root, we do square root of 52 and we get our 7.21, if this goes, there we go, for our hypotenuse. And because we knew that we went north and then west, and so now we're heading off at an angle, we went 7.21 miles northwest for our displacement. So we will go through the practice together in class, um, but please make sure you have those notes done and we'll be moving on.